want to look at Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5 and uh, reading at verse 17. Then the high priest rose up and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. Now these people have been preaching the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and, and uh, by the power of God they were healing people and uh, the authorities were not impressed and so they didn't want this to, to happen and so they put them in the common prison but the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. In other words, go and preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what I'm seeking to do. This other, preach the gospel of Christ, the way of salvation, the way that we can have forgiveness for our sins and a home in heaven through faith in our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. He is the one that we need urgently. We need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and as the Bible says, and thou shalt be saved. Salvation is not in a man-made religion, my friend. It will just damn you down to hell. God wants you to come to his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who was crucified upon the cross for you and for me. And so these, these men here, these apostles, go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest came and uh, they that were with him and called the council together and all the senate of the children of Israel and sent to the prison uh, to have them brought. But when the officers came and found uh, them not in the prison, they expected them obviously to still be locked up in the prison. But the Lord had released them by his power because he wanted them to get out of there and preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ unto the people. Yes, but when the officers came and found them not in the prison, they turned and returned and told, saying, The prison truly found we shut with all safety, and the keepers standing without before the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man within. So the prisoners had gone. They'd gone out so they could preach the gospel of Jesus Christ unto the people, that which I'm trying to do this other. And we need to understand our great need of salvation. We need forgiveness for our sins. Without that forgiveness, we're heading down to hell, my friend. That's where we're going by default. God does not want us to go there. And that's why the Father sent the Son to be the Saviour of the world. Yes, he's available for the whole world to be saved, but unfortunately, the whole world will not be saved because they will not come in repentance toward God, that's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then you need to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to become a child of God. See, when we're born in this world, we are children of the devil, that is, spiritually speaking, in the sight of God. We need to be born again, born from above, born into God's family through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who was crucified for us upon the cross, the one who loved us unto death, even the death of the cross. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. That's where the rubber meets the road. What you do with Christ will determine your eternal destiny, my friend. We need to understand we are all heading out into eternity. Eternity where? It's either going to be in heaven through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ or it's going to be down in hell and eventually the lake of fire for eternity where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. God does not want that for any one of us, my friend. And that's why he sent the Lord Jesus Christ to be crucified upon the cross. Now we know that Christ died for our sins according to scriptures 
and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He's a living, loving saviour, my friend. He wants to save your soul here this other. And as you listen to this message, you need to get right with God. You need to consider where you'll be throughout all of eternity. As I said, it's either going to be in heaven or down in the lake of fire and brimstone. There's no need for that, my friend. God does not want you to go there. And that's why he sent the Lord Jesus Christ to be crucified upon the cross for each and every one of us. Every man, woman, boy and girl, the Lord Jesus Christ died for the lot of us, all of us. There's no exceptions here. For God so loved the world, as we've just quoted, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Have you put your faith in the person of Christ? He's either going to be your saviour or he's going to be your judge. What will it be for you? God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now, again, repentance, it's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of, Son of God, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, and your soul be saved. If you do that, but if you don't, obviously your soul won't be saved. And you'll end up dying and going down to hell. God does not want you to go down to hell, my friend. Come to Christ where there's still time and opportunity. Time is running out. We don't know when we, we're going to leave this earth. None of us know when we're going to leave this earth, my friend. We've got to be ready to meet God. The Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. How can we prepare? Only by having forgiveness for our sins. By our sins being forgiven and washed away in the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who has made sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So, you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your soul will be saved. So it says here, But when the officers came and found them not in the prison, they returned and told, saying, The prison uh, truly found was shut with all safety, and the keepers standing without before the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man within. Now, when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these things, they doubted of them whereunto this would grow. Then came one and told them, Behold, it's saying, Behold, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Praise the Lord. They were doing exactly what God asked them to do. He said, Go stand and speak to the people all the words of this life the words concerning eternal life, that we would have eternal life, that we would receive forgiveness for our sins so that we can enter into heaven. So we cannot be in heaven because of our sins. Our sins have shut us out of heaven. And yet there's only one way into heaven. That is through the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who was crucified for us upon the cross so that you and I might receive forgiveness for our sins and a home in heaven through faith alone in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, you have filled uh, Jerusalem with your doctrine, in other words, with your teaching, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. So they continued to preach in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ is the only way of salvation. He's the only way for us to get to heaven. There's absolutely no other way that we can enter into heaven apart from entering through the door and that door is the Lord Jesus Christ. John 10 and verse 9, he said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pastor. That's what God wants for you. He wants to satisfy your longing soul. You see, the, the pleasures of this world, yes, they do 
they do uh, satisfy for a little, you know, five minutes or whatever it might be of fun. But the point is this, there's no lasting pleasure found in, on this earth, in this world, in the worldly pleasures that we seek after. You know, what is it? It's booze, drugs and all the rest of the rubbish that goes with it. The point is this, they all fizzle out. You must admit that if you, uh, you know, have a drink or something, then you'll have to have a stronger drink. You, you do drugs and you'll have to have a stronger drug. And it just goes on and on and on. And people just end up dying because of the overdoses and all sorts of junk that happen to them because they're just not satisfied. But I'm here to tell you, the only one that can satisfy you is Jesus Christ. He is the one that wants to satisfy the longing soul. Do you like that? Yeah. Yeah. He wants to satisfy your longing soul, I think because we have a craving inside of our heart, so to speak, and we cannot really satisfy that craving unless we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, unless we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he satisfies the longing soul, my friend. There's nothing on this earth that can satisfy like the, the satisfaction of knowing that your sins are forgiven and you're on your way to heaven, and it's all because of the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ upon the cross. Wait a minute. Have a great night. Yes, yeah, so the Lord Jesus Christ is well able to save your soul. And that's exactly what he wants for each and every one of us. He doesn't want us to go down to hell. He wants us to be saved. Yes, then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. And that's what it's all about is doing that which is right in the sight of the Lord. That the Lord has told us as believers, as Christians, to go here into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And so we'll continue to do that no matter what. Even if the persecution gets very heavy in the land down under here, we're going to continue to do it. Why? Because God asked us to do it, not man. You know, if man tells us to be quiet, we'll, we'll just keep on going. Because we know that your soul is very precious unto the Lord. And God wants to save your soul, this other, my friend. You have a soul that is very valuable to the God of heaven. He doesn't want to see you wasted. He doesn't want to see you go down to hell at the end of this little life upon earth. Where are you headed? Are you headed up into heaven through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? Or are you headed downward, down to hell? Because you have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. There's no need for that. God wants to save your soul this hour, my friend. The only way you can do that is if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Way to heaven. Yes, the Lord Jesus Christ is the only way of salvation. There's no other way. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. That's Acts 4, verse 12. Look it up. Make sure I'm not... Uh, lying to you. You need to look it up in the Word of God yourself. Make sure the preacher is telling you the truth. Now what are we saying? God is saying this, for there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we're all in the same boat, we're all tied with the same brush, we're heading down to hell by default. Way to heaven. But the good news is, God does not want that. He doesn't want us to go down to hell. He wants us to be in heaven. And the only way you can be in heaven is if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who was crucified for us upon the cross can be your saviour this hour. Way to heaven. Yes, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus whom you slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a saviour, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Thanks, bro. Have a great day. God bless you. Yes, the Lord Jesus Christ is able to save your soul. And he's the only one who can save your soul. There's no other way. It was only through the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way. Notice carefully his words. I am the way, not a way. The way. The truth. 
and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The question is, have you come? Have you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and become a child of God through faith alone in him? You know, the word of God says, for you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So you've got to put your faith in Christ to be in heaven. There's no other way whatsoever. There are not many ways to heaven. There's only one way to heaven. That is through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Yes, him, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a saviour for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Have you received forgiveness for your sins? It's only possible through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that was shed, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things, uh, and so is also the Holy Spirit, whom God hath given to them that obey him. How can we obey him? We obey God by coming in repentance toward God, that is, as I've said, a change of mind, agree with God that you are a sinner, and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and God promises you everlasting life. That everlasting life is absolutely free, but it costs God everything. It costs God his beloved son entering into death, going through the article of death. Yes, he went into death, but praise God he came out the other side alive. Praise the Lord, he's risen from the dead the third day according to the scriptures. And that also can be yours. You can have life in Christ. That's what God wants. He wants to, you need to be born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Yes, and when they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. So they wanted to kill these apostles, the ones who were preaching the gospel, and they were thrown in prison because of that, and then the Lord uh, released them from that, and then they went out and preached the gospel more. And so this is what happens. You know, persecution... I believe persecution will increase here in the land down under. You see that ambulance there went around the corner? What would happen if I was in it and I was dead on arrival? Think about it. What would happen to you? Where would you be? Would you be in heaven the moment you die? Or would you be down in hell? This is reality, my friend. This is what we need to understand. We need to take note. And we need to think about eternity. Eternity, as we often say as preachers, is a long time to be wrong. You can't afford to muck this up. You can't afford to get this wrong. You can't blow it, my friend. You've got to get this right. This issue of salvation. The issue of forgiveness for your sins. And the only way of forgiveness is through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that was shed on that cross for you and for me. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Yes, then stood there up one in the council of Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had in reputation among all the people and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space and said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do is touching these men. But be careful what you do with, the, with these fellows. For before these days rose up the Deus, boasting himself to be somebody to whom a number of them, about four hundred, joined themselves, who was slain, and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. Sorry? Yeah, God bless you too. What? Look, look me up on YouTube? Yeah, look us up on YouTube. Yeah. God bless you. Yeah, same to you. God bless you. Yeah, join themselves who were slain and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. I mean, was brought to nothing. After this man uh, rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing and drew away much people after him. He also perished and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. In other words, it will fizzle out if this is just of man.
that, if it be of God, and it is of God, you cannot overthrow it. That's why the gospel of Jesus Christ and the Christian message cannot be overthrown. Because people have tried to get rid of this for years and years, and they cannot get rid of it. The devil even can't get rid of it. Because God will have all men to be saved and to come under the knowledge of the truth. In other words, it's not God's will that you go down to hell. God wants to save your soul this either, my friend. But you've got to come in repentance toward God, as I've said. Acknowledge you're a sinner before God. Be honest before God. It's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, and your soul will be saved. This would be the best day of your entire life, my friend, if you were to come to faith in Christ, if you were to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and become a child of God. For we are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So it's urgent. It's important. We need to get right with God. We need to have forgiveness for our sins. Otherwise, we'll die and go down to hell. Can't make it any simpler than that. And I dare not uh, water the gospel of Jesus Christ down. We need to understand the danger that you're in. If you die without Christ, you'll be in hell. If you die believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, by receiving him, you'll be in heaven. That's a wonderful thing. You know, you can never, ever lose your salvation. Once you're a child of God, you're always a child of God. You can never, ever lose that eternal salvation. Like it says here, but if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it. And the devil would, would love to shut me up. The devil would love to stop people preaching about Jesus Christ because he knows he's the only way of salvation. See, the devil knows he's going down to the lake of fire and brimstone. His goose is cooked, to use an expression. He cannot be saved, but you can be saved. And that's my prayer, that you would be saved this other, that you would become a child of God and receive forgiveness for your sins so that your soul can be saved. So we have a soul that needs to be saved. If that soul is not saved, will die and go down to hell. God does not want that for you. He's not willing, as I've said before, God is not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. Again, repentance being a change of mind. Come to God. Agree with Him. Yes, I realize that I'm a sinner. And then you need to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You can receive forgiveness for your sins and a home in heaven. Have peace with God, everlasting life through faith alone in the Lord Jesus Christ. Have a great night. God bless you. Yes, and to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus. Yeah, right. As if they're going to listen to that. They should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. In other words, suffer shame for the name of the Lord Jesus. And daily in the temple, here's the proof, they didn't, they didn't shut up, they didn't stop. And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. And that's what it's all about. This Argo, I want to present the Lord Jesus Christ unto you as the only way to heaven because it's a reality, it's a fact. He's the only way to heaven. We'll quote that verse again, Acts 4 verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. You must be saved. If you're not saved, you remain in a lost condition, heading down to hell because your sins have not been forgiven. This is a warning. God is giving us warnings after warning. I wonder how many warnings you've had. We're headed down to hell by default. God does not want that for you. He wants to save your precious soul. The only way you can save it is if you put your faith in his beloved son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Realize you're a sinner. Admit that to God. And then put your faith in his beloved son. And God promises you everlasting life. 
For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So these men, these apostles, although they were being persecuted, although they were locked up in jail and then the, the Lord freed them, and although they have been very heavily persecuted, they continued to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ unto the people, knowing that this is the most important thing we would ever hear, and we need to be saved. We need to be in heaven the moment we die. There's no point going down to hell, and there's no need to go down to hell, way to heaven. God wants you to be with him for all of eternity in heaven, but we cannot get there apart from putting our faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. So moving on now to Acts chapter 6. And in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples under them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. In other words, we've got too much preaching to do. We don't want to stop this preaching. We've got to get someone else to do this. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may uh, appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves uh, continually to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. In other words, to prayer and to the uh, preaching of the Word of God. And the same pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, uh, and Prochorus, and uh, Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them, that is, identified them to do the work that the Lord had called them to do, and the word of God increased. And the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. And a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. That's what you need to be. Obedient to the faith. The faith of Christ. Believing on the Lord Jesus Christ and receiving forgiveness for your sins so that you can be in heaven the moment you die. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Then there arose a certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of Libertines, and Cyrenians, and Alexandrians, and of them of Cilicia, and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. And, when, and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Then they suborned men, which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council and set up false uh, witnesses which said, This man caused, uh, ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say, that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. We never, you never said any such thing. It was making up stories. And all that sat in the council looking steadfastly on him saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. This is the Stephen's face. It looked like a face of an angel. So we see here that this man is very steadfast. He's full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. And he's doing great, great work for God. And this is what we need, more people like this on earth, that will, people that will get out on the streets, especially here in the land down under, but all over the world, we need more people to get out and preach to the people the words of this life, all the words of this life, how we can have forgiveness for our sins and a home in heaven through faith alone in the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is possible for you, this other, my friend. If you come to faith in Christ, if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will become a child of God. For you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So we've got to put our faith in Christ to be in heaven, to have forgiveness for our sins and a home in heaven. No need to go down to hell, you can be in heaven by putting your faith 
in the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, what do you need to do? Come in repentance toward God, that's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and God promises you everlasting life. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching. I appreciate that. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you, have a great day. Remember, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord.